If the US needed an excuse to attack China, they just got it. A balloon from China was spotted surveilling the US for days, and it caused so much tension among Americans that when President Joe Biden decided it was time to crush it out of the sky, the US Air Force sent its most lethal, most advanced fighter, the F-22 Raptor, to do the job. The US is no newbie to spying on another country and has been doing it occupationally for well over six decades, with its respective ups and downs. One time it led to heightened tensions and threats of nuclear war between the US and the Soviet Union. Another time it led to the US being able to determine a boatload of useful information for Ukraine as Russia was about to invade the country. The latter, being far more recent, would show the world how to spy over a country without getting shot down. A stark contrast to China's alleged approach with their now-destroyed intercontinental balloon. More news on that now. On February 2nd, the North American Air Defense Command issued a statement on Twitter saying that it detected and was tracking a high-altitude surveillance balloon flying over the continental United States. The balloon was traveling four miles higher than commercial airline traffic and was quite sizable because from so far below it, pilots were still able to spot the balloon with ease. The general sentiment was to shoot down the balloon instantly. But President Biden took a cautionary approach to waiting for the balloon to float over an area with no population before missiles went flying. Two days after the Twitter statement on Saturday, as the balloon wandered off the coast of South Carolina, the Federal Aviation Administration ensured that the airspace surrounding the balloon was closed by halting flights at several airports in both North and South Carolina. Given the go-ahead, one of two F-22 Raptors that had taken off from Langley Air Force Base shot down the balloon with one AIM-9X air-to-air missile, bringing an end to a bizarre international episode that captured the country's attention for several days. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, meanwhile, issued a statement on the spy balloon days before it was shot down, claiming it was a weather device that had gone extraordinarily astray. However, this explanation might not hold much water, because in the political climate, every balloon is an innocent weather balloon until investigations uncover that it isn't and that it has actually come with more sinister military-based intentions. This isn't the first time such an event is occurring. A glimpse into history shows that something similar happened in the mid-1900s, which led to what is today known as the U-2 crisis. Ironically, the intruding party then is the intruded party now the United States. Before China became the world power it is today, the US had used balloons to gather information on its then biggest rival, the Soviet Union. Project Mogul in the 1940s saw balloons with microphones sent into the Soviet Union to pick up the sounds of the country's first nuclear explosion. This was succeeded by Project Moby Dick in the 1950s, when cameras on balloons were used to take pictures of sensitive nuclear sites in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, didn't need to float in balloons into the US to spy because the US was an open society and so Soviet spies were free to tour the country as long as they could get their visiting story right. The US didn't have this option as the Soviet Union was a closed society. However, with the advancement of jet aircraft, they didn't need it. Jets were going to be the primary option for the US over balloons, which were simply too out of control for spying an attribute China seems to just be finding out. By 1960, the US was flying the U-2 spy plane into the Soviet Union with missions generally without a hitch. Until May 1, 1960, when a U-2 piloted by Air Force Captain Francis Gary Powers was shot down. The plane was a light one that, on paper, couldn't survive a hit. And so the US instantly assumed that both the plane and its pilot were gone in the most final sense possible. NASA, seemingly with nothing to gain from confessing to spying on the Soviets, thereafter put out a statement saying it was a weather plane that had gone off course. This is eerily similar to China's explanation for the floating balloon. However, when the Soviets triumphantly paraded powers and bits of the wreckage in Moscow, Washington realized the game was up. The U-2 crisis increased tensions between the US and the Soviet Union to new highs, with the then-Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev demanding in person an apology from then-American President Dwight Eisenhower. Drawing a parallel to the recent incident with China, tensions have also heightened, 
with Secretary of State Anthony Blinken having already postponed his planned visit to China till who knows when. If the Chinese balloon is discovered to be a spy device and the Chinese government is caught out in an obvious lie, this level of parallel to the U-2 crisis could be worrisome. This is because the U-2 crisis marked the beginning of one of the most dangerous periods of the Cold War, and not too long after it, the two superpowers were close to a nuclear exchange. However, despite this almost world-ending battle, Washington is once again keeping track of Moscow's activities, but this time in, around, and for Ukraine. And Russia can't do much about it because the American spy planes used this time are near impossible to stop. Here's what they are now and how the U.S. uses them to track Russia in Ukraine. The U.S. and other members of NATO gather and share with Ukrainian forces intelligence concerning developments on the Russian side, such as their almost 200,000 strong personnel and their composition of vehicles, among others. One massive benefit of this is that Russia's ability to launch a surprise attack or false flag operation against Ukraine is heavily mitigated. Both nations would have no choice but to fight hands in glove, facing each other, and fairly. Much of this battle-defining intelligence was gathered by two highly efficient spy planes, the age-old U-2 and the truly special RQ-4 Global Hawk. U-2 The Lockheed U-2, nicknamed Dragon Lady, is an American single-crew, single-jet engine, high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft operated by the United States Air Force and previously flown by the CIA. It was introduced into service in 1956 and has since flown over the Soviet Union, China, Vietnam, and Cuba. In its over 65-year time in service, the U-2 has taken part in post-Cold War conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq and supported several multinational NATO operations where it was used in electronic sensor research, satellite calibration, scientific research, day and night all-weather intelligence gathering, and communications purposes. And it continues to provide these services today. The U-2 is capable of such a wide array of missions due to its features. Powered by a General Electric F-118-101 turbofan engine that produces 17,000 lbf of thrust, the aircraft, capable of carrying up to 5,000 pounds of payload, has a cruise speed exceeding a decent Mach 0.7, an operational range of 7,010 miles, and a service ceiling of 80,000 feet, which is higher than even the B-2 Spirit can fly. The view is beautiful. There's no weather. You see the curvature of the Earth as you scan the horizon, you can see, actually see the, uh, the shape of the Earth. The U-2 is also able to stay in mission for an extensive period, boasting an endurance of up to 12 hours as the jet engine is fed the up to 2,950 gallons of fuel in the aircraft's tank. Only 104 U-2s were ever created. RQ-4 Global Hawk the Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk is a high-altitude, remotely piloted surveillance aircraft designed to enter and dominate the 21st century as it supports forces in worldwide military operations. The RQ-4 provides a broad overview and systematic surveillance using high-resolution synthetic aperture radar and electro-optical infrared sensors with exceptionally long 34-hour-plus loiter times over target areas. It can survey as much as 40,000 square miles of terrain per day an area the size of South Korea or Iceland. According to the U.S. Air Force, the superior surveillance capabilities of the aircraft allow more precise weapons targeting and better protection of friendly forces. Other users include NASA and NATO as a whole. The widespread adoption of the RQ-4 is thanks to a performance that remains unrivaled by any similar unmanned surveillance aircraft. The RQ-4 has a payload capacity of 3,000 pounds and powered by a single Rolls-Royce F-137RR100 turbofan engine that produces 7,600 lbf of thrust. The aircraft has a maximum speed of 391 miles per hour, a vast operational range of 390 miles, and a space-bordering service ceiling of 60,000 feet. All of these combine to give each RQ-4 a flyaway cost of up to $131.4 million significantly costlier than the $80 million F-35 Lightning II. The RQ-4 Global Hawk from Northrop Grumman and the U-2 spy plane from Lockheed appear to be a huge part of all the U.S. needs for top-tier surveillance as opposed to a balloon that could go around the world and almost start a war. 
These American spy planes, packed with all the advancements of the 21st century, keep the US, NATO, and other allies, including Ukraine, abreast of key information on the operations of opposition parties such as Russia and China. And according to experts, they'll perform even better if you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do so now, and thanks for watching.